Hello, welcome to Five Pin Link. Today we're looking at Auditor. It's a new audio editor for iOS. Yes, I said iOS. Um, and it's we're going to be looking specifically at its slicing tools. Uh, when you first load Auditor, you'll find this screen, which is your files.app. You can pick any audio file you want. I'm going to load in Apache, like so. Um, it's two bars long, so I want to shrink it down. So I'm just going to hit loop, and I'm going to find a one bar loop point I'm going to zoom in using pinch zoom and do it a little bit more accurate like so and then zoom back out right that's my uh, one bar loop I'm going to hit selection to loop then crop now I've got just one bar here the next thing I want to do is um, I want to make it into a monophonic file rather than a stereo um, this will slice in stereo so that's not a problem it's just because it's drums I tend to want to make it uh, monophonic there's two ways to do that you can sum or you can uh, just use a single uh, channel personally I like to use a single channel uh, so we're going to extract channels like so but first I'm going to show you how to sum uh, the way I've found to do it anyway I haven't looked at the manual there might be an easier way to do this but once you've extracted your, your two channels you open up your channel controls here like so um, double click to put them both in the center like that uh, close that back up and then we'll go to more and bounce and it's automatically bounced that down to a monophonic file at the bottom. So you just select your regions and delete your regions like so. And now you've got a summed monophonic version of your original file. Now, I don't want to do that. Like I said, personally, I like to use a single channel um, because then I haven't got any uh, drum into play. Um, so we're going to extract channels again. And then I'm just going to select one of the channels and delete region. And now I've got a mono version um, which is just the left channel. I'm going to click on more. I'm going to hit remove DC to center the waveform as much as possible. And then I'm going to hit normalize. So we're using as much volume as possible. Once we've done that, we're going to hit our loop tools and we're going to hit slicing. And you can see the sensitivity has already put slices in on most of the hits. The next thing I'm going to do, and I always do this as soon as I open the slicer, is I'm going to hit the metronome because you can forget to do this, which is what I did the very first time I used it. Your MIDI file won't work if you forget to do this. Your MIDI file, you have to have that at the right tempo for it to fit into your door as a loop and then change with whatever tempo changes you make in your door. So we hit the metronome here like so. Uh, we know it's only four beats long so there you go we've got our tempo of 111.92 bpm uh, next thing we can do is check our slices so we'll go back to the first slice using the forward and backward buttons here uh, once you've got a slice selected you can hit play the slice as you can hear on this slice, it hasn't actually found, found both hits. Now you could turn your sensitivity up if you wanted to. Personally, I would prefer to just go into manual mode and then I'm just going to drag my uh, play marker over and hit add marker. Now there's another one here as well, which I, I know because I can see it. And if we actually go back to the previous marker press play, now you can hear there's one there. Now when I move the marker, there's actually snapping for the zero cross point, but it's in the wrong place for, for how I want it. So I'm going to zoom in, and then your snapping is over overridden, and I can move it to wherever I want. Hit um, add marker, and that's it. I'm good to go. That I've got it all sliced how I want it sliced. The next thing to do is to save it out. Now, you can save it out in a couple of different ways. Um, I can hit A here or wave and apple loop now i'm going to save the apple loop here like so i'll just call it a owl now for something like garage band or beat maker i'm going to use beat maker in particular here uh, using an apple loop is brilliant because you get a single file you can load it in and uh, all your slicing is set ready for you in beat maker now if you're exporting for beat maker in particular you want to change the bass note to 60 that will start the midi pattern at c3 which is where beat maker will expect it to be uh, so we can hit export and then i'm going to go to my uh, beat maker import folder which is already set to here and then i'm just going to hit save 
and the next way to save it is to export slices uh, so we're just going to use wav and we'll call it Apache, like so. And this is great for something like Nano Studio, which is what I'm going to use to show. Now, when you export it specifically for Nano Studio, you want to change the bass note to 48. That's the first note for uh, a sleek drum kit. So we're going to hit export. I'm just going to go to my Nano Studio folder. Like so, library, into audio and I'm just going to put it in sliced beats. Now you can press cancel on the slicer here and you can close auditor. Okay we're in Beatmaker and what we're going to do is we're going to drag the sample in so we're going to find the sample and drag it into a pad like so. There's two ways of doing this. The first method we'll use is using a single pad and we just go to slice mode like so and that's it it's already sliced from auditor we go to the arranger we create a pattern then we open the pattern go to the piano roll then we drag in our midi file and we just press import and now when you press play it's playing the beat and you've got all your controls uh, like your envelopes, etc., all on one, one layer. That's the first way to do it, and that gives you a single pad with your beat on. Uh, the next way to do it, uh, we'll go, we'll just create a new project straight away. We'll load in the Apache file, like so. We'll click on Slice Mode, and then we'll click on Save Slices to Pads. And you can either hit create pattern here, or you can use your MIDI file. So it's just as easy to create pattern. And click on your pattern helper. And again, it's in, it's playing, and now it's across pads as well. So each pad has obviously got its own individual controls. It's still a single sample, um, but that's the two ways to do it in Beatmaker. Um, it works perfectly, and uh, it's actually, I find it slightly more accurate, well, a lot more accurate, to be honest, than, than uh, Beatmaker's slicing. It's just it, the, the actual zoom in and slice editing is a lot, a lot more accurate in uh, Auditor. Now, before we cross into Nano Studio, uh, what I want to do is go to Nano Studio 2's library. I want to go to Audio. I want to go to Slice Beats, open up the folder here, like so. And then we're going to move this MIDI file into Nano Studio 2's MIDI folder. So we'll put it in there called Grooves. So if we go out now to our uh, MIDI library, it'll be there in grooves. You can organize this however you like for good housekeeping. Okay, we're in Nano Studio 2, we've got a new project. We're gonna create a Slate drum track, like so. We're gonna open Slate, go to Files, Samples at the top, uh, click on Slice Beats, which is where you'll find your Apache, and then you just drag and drop, like so. Uh, it doesn't take too long, seems longer while I'm recording, <laughs> but uh, it's just simple drag and drop, like so. Now we've got all the, the uh, samples in there, the next thing we do is go to Arranger, open up our MIDI files, go into Grooves, find Apache 112, and we're just going to drag this up to the slate track. It merged to a single part, like so, import. And we can close our MIDI files. Bring our MIDI over into place. And that's it. 
all in, loaded perfectly. Obviously you can save this out as a kit and do any modifications you want, but that's the, the two ways to use Auditor to slice audio. Um, I've used Beatmaker and Nano Studio, but obviously you can import into all kinds of software. Um, works great, really accurate. We'll see you on the next video.